and sisters. Today's image, example I should say, today's example of repentance in the life of St. Mary of Egypt is a great and awesome example. Today being the fifth Sunday of the great fast, the Holy Orthodox Church always commemorates in a special way the memory of St. Mary of Egypt who lived in the 6th century and lived a life of fornication. She was a harlot. She lived for the sake of the pleasures of the flesh. That was her sole purpose. She loved herself more than anyone. And she wanted to obtain as much pleasure as she possibly could. Through fornication, through food, through drink. She lived this way for 17 years. One day, however, in Alexandria, there was a ship heading to Jerusalem, a ship of pilgrims going to venerate the cross of Christ. And so she made her way onto the ship out of curiosity and came to Jerusalem. And as she followed the crowd going into the church, she was unable to actually enter the temple. She tried several times and realized that there was some invisible force preventing her from going in. And in the porch, in the vestibule, there was an icon of the Mother of God, and she appealed to the Mother of God, asking that her son allow her to venerate the cross. And so she went and tried again, and with joy found out she was able to enter the, cross, into the church. After venerating the cross, she was told by the Mother of God, if you want to find peace, or you will find peace by crossing the Jordan. So she crossed the Jordan, went to a church, and communed the holy body and blood of Christ after confession, and then lived more than 40 years in the desert. Extreme, extreme repentance. All she had was a little bit of food and the clothes on her back. Hard for us to imagine. But nevertheless, she pursued true repentance because she had to fight much within herself. She had to fight the inner demons, the memories, all the memories that she had of living as a harlot. And she had to combat with them, she recalls, for 17 years. And as she recalled her life to the venerable Zasimus, she said, after that, I had peace. And she remained in the desert. She didn't go back to the world. You know, we, you could look at the situation and think, well, she completed her penance. She achieved or received God's forgiveness. She didn't have to stay in the desert. But after those 17 years, she stayed in the desert, now because she truly wanted to. Now because she found peace. She found wholeness. Because that wholeness, which is given to all of us, she lost because of her sinful ways. She was in complete error, and she could, not, she could not follow the commandments of loving God with all of her heart, with all of her soul, with all of her mind, and all of her strength, because she was fractured, she was broken. 
She was, her image was distorted. She was weak because of sin. Now she was whole, having achieved peace from God, and she didn't want to lose it. For her, that wholeness was far more valuable than anything else that this world could offer. For us, brothers and sisters, today's example of repentance should inspire us. We heard in the Gospel for St. Mary about how this harlot came to Jesus and anointed his feet with her tears of repentance and then bought fragrant oils. She poured upon Jesus all of her heart and Simon was upset at this. For he followed the law. He was a Pharisee himself. Part of the chosen people. And our Lord told him, basically, she has sinned much. And because she is forgiven much, she loves in return much. We see that in the life of St. Mary. We see how she, in today's Treparvian we hear, how she taught with her life for us to disregard the demands of the flesh, of earthly life, and to pay attention with all of our heart to the demands of our soul. Because our earthly life, our physical existence is fleeting, we are here one day and we're gone the next. However, our soul is eternal. The most precious thing we have in our life. It's not our children. It's not our spouse. It's not our family that's most precious. It's our soul. And not for selfish reasons. It's our soul because only through our soul can we have life? Can we love God? And can we love one another? A soul that is filled with fornication, attachment to earthly pleasures, like St. Mary, cannot do anything else but love itself, which leads to destruction. But a soul, a soul that has love for God, has life. A soul that has love for God has strength to love one another. A soul that has love is whole and complete. And is not led astray by the demands or the cares or the pleasures of this life. A soul that has love is not frightened by all the temptations and difficulties of this life. Be it death or sickness, be it crime or all kinds of harm from others. A soul that has love has peace. Last week, brothers and sisters, we heard, we heard in the gospel how Jesus rebuked his disciples for not praying and fasting enough because they couldn't cast out the evil, the, the evil demon in the young boy. He basically told them, this is how you do it. You need to pray more and fast more. We, now on the fifth Sunday of the Great Fast, hearing the example of St. Mary of Egypt, see how this comes to be. How often we disregard the demands of our soul because of the demands of our flesh. We want to sleep. We want to eat. We want to entertain ourselves. We can't do that. It's beyond my strength, we may say to ourselves. But we see in St. Mary of Egypt, who overcame tremendous hardship, tremendous
tremendous heat and cold, thirst and hunger that we can't even imagine. She didn't do it on her own. It's impossible. Christ says, without me you can do nothing. So by the fact that she did this indicates that Christ was with her, that Christ supported her, upheld her, strengthened her, gave her all that she needed, not for the sake of the flesh, but for the sake of the soul. And so, brothers and sisters, let us be inspired by St. Mary of Egypt. Let us strive let us strive to increase our prayers and love God more, asking Him to forgive us our sins, asking Him to give us strength to overcome that which prevents us from bringing forth, bringing forth fruits of repentance, asking Him for enlightenment to see our life in His light, to see our sins. Frequently we come to confession, we don't know what to say. Maybe we're comparing ourselves to the people we read about in the tabloid magazines. If we did that, we wouldn't have anything to say. But how do we compare ourselves to the lives of the saints? How do we compare ourselves to St. Mary of Egypt? Then we would have much to say. And again, not for our condemnation, but for the sake of salvation, we should do this. So let us, brothers and sisters, keep the remaining two weeks of this fast, strive to bring forth fruits of repentance, strive to examine our conscience with greater attention and fervor, and strive to always tend to the cares and need of our soul, because it is eternal. O Holy Venerable Mother Mary of Egypt, Pray to God for us. Amen.